Hello humans, Artist with the Fro here, and welcome back to the show. Today, we're actually going over a Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and in fact, I actually have two Yu-Gi-Oh! videos that I'm going to be making um, in regards to two of the decks that I am currently playtesting and where they are in, uh, I guess, in regards to their completion and how they work overall. So the deck that we're actually going to be tackling today, or rather, the first deck that we're going to be tackling today is Fortune Lady Nordics. So this is coming out of the uh, last booster set before Fist of the Gadgets, I believe. Um, Rising Rampage, there were a lot of support cards that came out for Fortune Ladies. And I'm pretty much just going to read through most of the deck. I'm going to list off any abilities that might be new to certain people. Um, but I'm also going to probably show you guys some combos or some early on type of things that you might want to do in order to have this deck really show its maximum potential. So really quickly, we're going to go through all of the monsters. Now again, I have made previous videos for this specific deck. So if you do want to see kind of the progression, I do encourage you to check out those other videos on the Artist with the Fro YouTube channel. If you have any other further questions, you can always ask me at my Twitter, at Artist with the Fro. Now, to start with the monsters, we're running three Alvis of the Nordic Alfar. Um, this is your basic spell caster, level 4. He actually is special summoned by the Link monster immediately when you, or rather, I would say you want to special summon him with the Link monster when you summon it. Um, his ability is basically once he's sent to the graveyard, if you have a Nordic Aesir monster on the field and that monster is removed from the field to the graveyard, you can banish him to special summon another uh, Nordic Synchro, either Odin, Loki, or Thor from your extra deck. Um, but you can only use this effect once per duel. Ash Blossom, everybody knows what Ash Blossom does. We have Diverg of the Nordic Alfar. He's basically your marauding captain. Um, when you normal summon him, you could just get to normal summon another Nordic uh, monster. And we only run three Nordic, sorry, four Nordic monsters. So you're, if you're not summoning, summoning another one of him, then he is also a one star. So you can uh, just send him straight to the graveyard to summon a Link Karibo. Or if you have two of them, you can send them both to some in Slacker Magician. Eater of Millions, everyone knows what Eater of Millions does. And then we're going to actually go into our first Fortune Lady. So Fortune Lady Dark is a 5-star Dark Spellcaster monster. She gains 400 attack for each star she has. So she starts out at 2,000 and then she gains an additional star during your standby phases. While she's on the field, if a Fortune Lady monster that you control destroys another monster by battle, you can special summon a Fortune Lady from your graveyard in any position that you want. Uh, moving on to Fortune Lady Fire, again, same effect, however, she starts off at 400, she gains an extra 200 each turn. If she's special summoned by a Fortune Lady card, and I'm actually going to preface that again, if she is special summoned by a Fortune Lady card, not a Fortune Lady monster, or trap or spell, it can be all of them, actually. If she's special summoned by any card that has Fortune Lady in it, that, that special summons a Fortune Lady monster, her effect activates, which allows her to target and destroy one monster your opponent controls, and they take damage equal to that monster's attack. We're actually running two Fortune Lady Lights, Similar effect as Fortune Lady Fire. She has 200 for each star, starts off at 200, and gains a star every standby phase. If she's removed from the field by a card effect, you get to special summon one Fortune Lady from your deck regardless of the level. And then finally, again from Rising Rampage, we have Fortune Lady Past, aka Carly Carmine in Fortune Lady form. Um, well, actually, this isn't the last Fortune Lady, but what this card does is very similar to Light and Fire, has 200 attack, gains 200 each turn. Every, uh, rather, once per turn, you can activate her effect, target one monster you control, and then banish any number of spellcasters from your hand, field, or graveyard to have that monster gain levels equal to the number of monsters that you've sent to, uh, to the Banish Zone, or that you've removed from play. She actually is also a level 1 tuner as well, and she sets up for the special summon of the new Fortune Lady Synchro. Fortune Lady Water is a 4-star Fortune Lady Water Spellcaster monster. She starts off at 1,200 and gains an extra 300 each turn. If she is special summoned by a Fortune Lady card, similarly to Fire, you actually get to draw two cards. We have Necroface, a very old card. Uh, when it's normal summon, it shuffles all banished cards back into the deck. And when it's banished, both players have to remove and play five cards from the top of their deck. 
Next, you have Svartalf of the Nordic Alphar. If this card is normal summoned, you can target one Nordic monster in your graveyard, add that target back to your hand. Instead of a Kaiju, we are running the Winged Dragon of Ross Spear Mode. This is mainly my, I would say this is my substitute for Nibiru. However, I do find that Winged Dragon of Ra is a little bit more situational. Um, now that most people know about Nibiru, they're kind of like limiting their own summons. So when they leave it at three, it's just like, all right, I can at least send that to the grave or send that to the grave. Um, rather than having to wait for them to summon five or even like if, if they feel as if you're going to summon Nibiru on them, then they're not going to summon as many monsters in the turn. So I feel like it's personally better to have Winged Dragon of Ra just for the, uh, the extra, I guess, protection. Um, also, the fact that it goes back to your side of the field at the end of uh, your opponent's turn is also pretty good. Moving on to our last monster, we have Vanadis of the Nordic Ascent. When she's on the field, you can activate her effect, send one Nordic monster from your deck to the graveyard, and then she gains stars based off of, uh, rather, she her level turns into that monster's level based off of the Nordic that you've sent. So in this deck, she can either become a four star, a one star, or a five star monster. If you do use her effect, however, um, you can only synchro summon uh, with her and the other materials have to be Nordic monsters. Moving on to our first spell card, we have Fortune Lady Calling. If you control a Fortune Lady monster, you get to special one, special summon one straight from your deck. Uh, you can only use the effect once per turn, um, and then after that, you can't special summon any monsters at all from the extra deck except Fortune Lady monsters. So it's a good kind of card that you can use to combo, especially if you need to summon fire or water to draw two cards, or if let's say you have light on the field and you kind of want to start the chain with light moving into past and then again back into water, uh, dark, or fire. Fortune Vision is your reinforcement of the army. Um, it basically just lets you draw or rather add a Fortune Lady card from your deck to your hand. Um, it's actually a little bit better, I would say, than Rhoda because it lets you get Fortune Lady Calling and it lets you get one of the trap cards that will show up in the future as well. It has additional effects, um, which basically state that if a card is banished during your turn, then monster cards that you control cannot be destroyed by battle. And if a card is banished during your opponent's turn, then monster cards you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. Moving on to our next spell card, we have Fortune's Future. It's kind of like a burial from the different dimension mixed with Pot of Avarice. It allows you to return one banished Fortune Lady from your graveyard back, or yeah, sorry, from the banished zone back to your graveyard. And then if you do so, you draw two cards. Uh, next we have Future Visions. Any time a monster is normal summoned, it is banished, but then it is returned back to the field at the next standby phase. Of course we have Gold Sark, uh, which is kind of used in a weird way. It's set, it's set up to be the catalyst for Necroface, however you can also use it, let's say if you need Ra, or if you need a Fortune Lady card to get um, in a moment's notice. Uh, again, everybody kind of knows what Gold Sark does. So I'm just really going to move past that card. Monster Reborn, pretty standard. Rageki, again, another standard card. Rhoda, standard. Terraforming, again, just to get your future visions. It acts as that third one. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you have two Twin Twisters as well. Moving on to the traps, we only run four of them. Uh, we run two evenly matched. What this card does is it allows you to banish... Uh, your opponent's cards equal to the number of cards you control. If you have no cards in your hand, uh, or rather if you have no cards on the field, you can activate this card straight from your hand. So it's a good card to get, especially if you're running second, and especially if you're playing, I would say, against any meta deck, um, because they do tend to summon a lot of monsters or have a lot of cards face down. And then moving on to our last trap card, we have Fortune Lady Rewind. This allows you to target any number of banished Fortune Lady monsters with different names and special summon them. However, they are shuffled into the deck during the end phase. Now, this is basically your return from the different dimension, but the secondary sentence is what I really want to uh, name right there. You're returning all of the cards back into your deck during the end phase. So this effect actually triggers Fortune Lady Light's effect, which then allows you to special summon another Fortune Lady from your deck. We're going to move on to the side deck. Again, I am running two DD Crows, two Effect Veilers, and another Fortune Lady Light. I don't have anything else added into this right now, but I probably will include a few more cards as I flesh out the deck a bit more. Maybe a Nibiru, maybe a Dark Ruler No More, 
We'll just have to see. Uh, moving on to the extra deck, we are running Black Rose, Bryanak. Uh, in regards to Synchros, Black Rose, Bryanak, Colossal Fighter, Fortune Lady Every, which is the first new Fortune Lady. Uh, rather, another new Fortune Lady card, but she's the first Fortune Lady Synchro. Uh, what she does is every standby phase, her level increases by one. Uh, she then is allowed to banish one face-up card your opponent controls. If she is destroyed during... Sorry, excuse me. If she is destroyed... During your opponent's end phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish another spellcaster monster from your graveyard and special summon her, which then kind of sets it up so that way you can basically use her first effect next turn during the next standby phase. Again, we're running two Lokis into our first Aesir Synchros. We have one uh, Odin and then one Thor. Now, Loki, Thor, and Odin are, again, very old cards, so I'm not really going to get into their descriptions. Um, if you do, if you are, again, interested in what exactly their effects are, I encourage you to either find them on TCG Player, which I do not have an affiliate link to yet, and also uh, looking it up either on Dueling Nexus or Dueling Book. Of course, we have our Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora, uh, we're also running one Slacker Magician, we're running uh, Rail Cannon Gustav Max, and then moving on to our Link Monsters, we have Borolo, Dragon, we have two Gullveg of the Nordic, Al uh, sorry, of the Nordic Ascendant. What she is, is basically when you normal summon a Nordic monster, uh, you can basically, or rather, when you normal summon her, when you Link summon her, I apologize, you can banish up to three cards from your hand and or field and if you do special summon that many nordic monsters from your deck in defense position again very similarly to fortune lady calling if you do use that effect you can't summon any monsters from your extra deck except for nordic monsters so basically you summon diverg send diverg to the graveyard link summon gulveg and then you immediately uh, banish three cards from your hand any three it doesn't really matter um summon either Savaltov, vanadis Alvis or Diverg again, Synchro for one of the three, and then you're kind of set up. With Alvis in your graveyard, you'll also have a safety measure if one of your Nordics gets removed from the field. You can then summon a different one. And then finally, we have Link Karibo. As I mentioned before, this is a fairly short video, only because I have previewed this deck a few times. If you guys would like to have some sort of playtesting videos, just let me know. In fact, I actually am going to make them, regardless of, <laughs> regardless of you, uh, you humans letting me know whether or not you would want that type of content. I do want to show off the deck uh, a little bit more and kind of like really f stretch out its potential. Um, I do like it, and I do feel like it is another one of those rogue-style decks, but I think the remove from play factor really makes it somewhat competitively viable. So that's actually going to wrap it up for the video. Again, if you would like to know more, always reach out to me in the comment section. You, uh, I encourage anybody to subscribe, as well as following me on Twitter, at Artist with a Fro. But, as but aside from that, I've been the Artist with a Fro, and that, my friends, is the show. Thanks for watching.